Let's talk anime. Hello and welcome to Brandon's Discuss Anime, a 15 plus Reckless Amoeba podcast. I am your host, Brandon Horvath, and with me are my co hosts, Brandon Failinger. How'd you manio? I think I'm saying that right. And Ryan Stokely. Yo, what's up? A lot of stuff, actually. I saw two anime updates. Sadly, oh. they aren't JoJo related. Uh, Although that might be yourself. next That's year. It. Something that is coming next year, season two of Cells at Work. Boo. Why? Cells at Work was fun. Boo. Also, season three of Thunderbolt Fantasy is coming this fall. Double oh, boo. Dude, I started watching that. <laughs> Pretty good. Can I, can I share the hilarious story? Hold, hold, hold on, hold on. Orion, you said you started watching it? Yeah. Am I the only one then that thinks that their faces are kind of creepy because they don't move? Uh, they are kind of creepy, but... Thank you. That's all I needed to know. Brandon, you can continue. I did see that season three has finished filming, so it should be here by fall. Oh boy, I'm so oh, nice. excited. And can I share the funny oh, story, yeah. Orion? Go for, Go for it. it, man. So Orion texted me about a week ago and said, hey, I can't find that show we were watching. And he says, like, I'm looking for Thunder Fantasy. I can't find it. Uh, and, I, and I said, dude, it's Thunderbolt Fantasy. You could have at least looked up wait, a YouTube channel to find it. I, <laughs> I thought I said, like, Thunder Island or something. <laughs> I'm like, dude, this doesn't even make sense. And I, like, looked up, yeah, all things. I'm like, I don't understand. I typed in, like, marionette. Anime. <laughs> and Google's like, what the fuck are you on, dude? You just get Puppetmon from Digimon? Pretty much. <laughs> Have you at all seen the new reboot, Brandon? Of? Digimon. It started oh. like two or three weeks ago. No, I have not looked at it yet. I've... You know, now that I have all this extra time on my hands at work, I should probably just do that. <laughs> That's kind of how I watched this one, I'm not going to lie. And granted, I know a few weeks ago I said, I think I said Sora was the only one who got a costume redesign. It seems that everybody got costume redesigns. I would think they would. If one person got it, then the rest would. From what I've seen and from what I remember, Ties seems to be the least drastic. That would make sense. The most he, I mean, he's always got to have his goggles. That's like the symbol of any leader in that series. They got to have goggles. So anything. Goggles. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. I also started watching uh, Gara. <gasps> oh, Gara. You've been telling me about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I uh, watched like two episodes. But when I'm on vacation in a week, I'm going to watch the series. So far, it's pretty neat. Just like. You know, you and you probably didn't, that it is based on a horror tokusatsu. Oh, really? I mean, it was pretty creepy. But, uh. Yeah, like. I don't know. I didn't expect that, to be honest. I didn't read anything about it. I just saw it, like, thrown through on my fire stick. Um, and it popped up. I'm like, this looks neat. I think this is a deep prequel to the 2006 series. So, I, from what I've read... The Garo anime takes place in medieval times, kind of? Yeah, yeah. Okay, like, okay. Uh, I was trying to follow along. Like, uh, she stole a, uh, the hell is that? 
A pinwheel? Or one of those, like... A pinwheel? Not a pinwheel. Uh, what are the thing, the machines that you use to make uh, twine? A loom? No, that's that's for, like, blankets and shit. Um, yeah, like rumble stilt skin. Spinning wheel. Yes, that's what I was thinking of. Yeah, she ha- she uses, like, string. Like, uh-huh. magic string to kill shit. It's freaking sick. Oh, man, then just wait for JoJo Part 6. Dude, like, this guy is just a demon, and she throws this spool of wa- uh, string out and just cuts it in, like, a million bits. Ooh. But, but what about yeah. the Mobius strip you make out of your own body? Uh, I don't know, dude. Although I've only <laughs> seen, like, a few episodes of the live-action Garo. The only thing I remember is this bride is possessed by a demon and something like she wants to kill the entire wedding party so that she can, like, harvest their soul or something like that. So the Garo, or the current Garo, like, fights her, shoves her out of a building, gains the armor... All while falling, slices through her, lands, and is human again. So, all in about 10 seconds, the fight happens. What the hell? Huh. And I believe from what I've heard, the 2006 Garo, the horrors are the name of the monsters. They were designed by some dude who made costumes for Kamen Rider. Interesting. But hmm. I've seen pictures of Garo, and it does seem kind of creepy-esque. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah, I didn't... I was trying to find the live action, but it was the anime that kept popping up. Uh... Like, the thumbnail was live action, and then it was the anime. I would say... Yeah, I'm not too sure where they would have... The Garo on. I forget where I watched Kamen Rider Gaim. I don't remember. We'd have to look back at the actual episode because we might have mentioned it there. Yeah. But I believe there are three live, I mean, three animated seasons and five live action seasons with a maybe fifth or sixth going on now that just recently started, so lots more Garo if you enjoy it, Orion. Okay. Anything from you, side, Brandon? Any video game news you want to rage on? Uh, Stadia is now free. Who wants to play it? Oh, cool. I, lo- just... I love yeah. Orion's reaction. <laughs> just, the, just the immediate, what the f- why? Dude. Oh my god. But it's free now. Wasn't it like a $10? I, I, I believe that right now they are making the uh, the subscription free. You still got to play okay. full price for those games. Oh, wow. And, you know, for whatever the original bundle is. Yeah. So, you know, enjoy that. Wait, wait, wait. You had to pay for games on top of your monthly fee? Yes. What the hell? You didn't know. I thought we mentioned this, or did you first forget? Yeah, you got. You did get some free games, but there it was basically some. only like shit you already get on your cell phone. The best one, that, well, that, and let's not forget that they literally have lied for like most, if not all, of it by saying, "Oh man, they're all going to be in 4K." Yeah. HD. I think like literally all, but like one or two are not. Like quite literally. Also, quacking in the background is the dog playing with the toy. Okay. If that's getting picked up, I'm not sure. Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's it's funny. Like, the puppy's playing with the toys. Well, so yeah, you had you had to pay money for regular shit on top of everything else. I may have had the same reaction, but just the stupidity probably just I wanted to forget about. In, Oh, don't you want to don't you want to pay for it? No. 
it's fucking insane to me. Oh, uh, boy. So, yeah, that that's fucking dumb. Um, shit, was there something else I wanted to mention that I'm not remembering offhand right now? Uh, I can't think of anything offhand right now. Okay, okay. Um, so, Ryan, today's anime is Carnival Phantasm. Carnival Phantasm? Yes. Yup. Is it just spooky ghosts at a carnival? Not really. No. Uh... Jesus. Ryan, you got is this, it just I mean. carnies? Is it just carnies? Is it like a day in the life of a carny? You know, I would watch For that if that were a thing. That I would totally watch that. But come on, it has to be as stupidly insane of plot lines as Tiger King. Oh my fucking god, Tiger King. Yeah, Jesus dude. Christ. They're literally trash people, so... Man, I love yeah. those tigers. Points with stump for an arm. <laughs> Shoots at the ground near the tigers. Um, man. Is it about a clown? You did say carnival, right? Yes, carnival phantasm. Alright, so it's gotta be like a clown that fucking turns into a poltergeist. Uh-huh. Spook some people. Does Luigi like, show up and suck them up in a vacuum cleaner? No. Uh, maybe there's a bearded lady too. And uh-huh. they're married or something or were. And, uh-huh. and uh, he just follows her around to haunt her because she killed her. Because being a carny is like, I guess, kind of a dirty job, you know? Does lots Mike Rowe show up? Probably lots of drugs. Yeah. Lots of murders, like Lobster Boy. Lobster Boy. Yeah, that guy freaking murdered, like, two people or three people. Well, and, there uh, is... Uh, well, there is murder slightly involved, kind of. <laughs> yeah, that's my guess. I mean... It, depends right because i don't think any of that was technically intentional so i don't know if you can call it a murder well there was that oh no that was just one character having fun so Ryan, you've been here for 90 plus percent of our total run of this series Mm -hmm. besides jojo what else do we go back to a lot? Uh, fate? Yes. This is takes place in the Naru verse, which is everything owned by Type Moon. I'm sure it's Nasu verse, but you know. What? I think it's Nasu verse. Oh, not okay. Naru. Yeah, this take this is Type Moon, which makes Fate Stay Night and every other Fate series, and their other big franchise, Melty Blood, which is about vampires and (laughs) magic? I only know a little bit about Melty Blood myself. Um, A lot of it comes from not the series itself, but from, like, uh, extraneous materials. Um, They're set in the same universe, or I should say, I think they're set literally on the same planet, actually. Um, And I think that the end of A Melty Blood runs into one of the fake games. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I do know that they're not considered vampires. Granted, vampires exist in the series, um, in that world anyway. But in the case of what you're thinking of, I believe the actual term is um, Apostle Ancestor. And they're like some weird as fuck. Like, it's kind of a cross between a vampire and like a demon. Um, 
I forget exactly what they tend to feed off of, but it's not like blood or anything. I think it's literally like magical energy of the planet or something stupid like that. Like something ambiguously dumb. And Melty Blood is also originally a visual novel. Oh, okay. So, this combines the two major franchises into one insane balls to the walls comedy series. Oh, I'm wrong. They are exa- They are technically vampires. They just have a very stupid name for themselves. Got it. Okay. Cool. Because They're I... They're hyper vampires. I thought one of the Melty Blood Girls insulted another by saying, like, you dumb vampire. Yeah, okay, you're right. They, they are vampires, but they're very stupid hyper vampires. So, like, 25%, 30% of this series, I was laughing at, but I wasn't understanding some of the jokes that I might if I was more familiar with Melty Blood. But... Oh my god, sketch comedy, so insane. Yep. I I would say Pop Team Epic is a lot more crazy than this, but some of the situations these characters are in is utterly hilarious. And my favorite part, Rin is in this series from Fate Stay Night. Yay, Rin! You also got a magical girl look for her in that one section. Yes. Also, uh, Orion, out of curiosity, right? You you watched some Hanna Barbera shit back in the day, right? Oh hell yeah, dude! Do you remember Wacky Races? Yeah. <laughs> There's an entire episode literally based around that concept. Really? Yes. Oh, shit, that's pretty cool. And there is a running joke that. Lancer always dies. So he's Kenny from South Park. There's even an episode where he tries to literally get out of it and break the goddamn fate that he is meant to die. And we just flash back through all the moments when he's going to do it and how he manages to get his way out of there. Is that a Final Destination parody? It could have been. It would not surprise me if it was. Like, uh, it, I almost buy that all of the things that we saw there happen. The only one that wouldn't make sense, like, like what I mean is, um, in the series, it, it, during the series, you see Lancer dying all the time, but you never see how he gets out of it. It's like that section was cut from the episode, uh, until they put it back into that episode where it montages his way out of, like, getting out of death. Mm. I almost buy the idea that he uh, that he managed to um, do it, I want to say. Um, I, I almost buy the idea that he managed to get out of it on his own, um, except for that one episode where it's Berserker's first errand or whatever. <laughs> That's the only one that doesn't fall in line with anything else as far as like a cut portion, because it cuts directly into what happens there. <laughs> oh my god. Because that's like mid episode. That's that's not anything else. And when we say Berserker Lancer, we mean the the characters from Stay Night, even though they're all known as Berserker Lancer. Yeah, they're all known by their class. It, it kinda it's kinda what turns a lot of people off of fate is just the fact that like the characters are hard to follow when they all have the same names. Although I think in episode Twelve, I did see Alexander the Great in the background. Oh, did you? I don't know if I noticed that. With his, like, big red beard. I must have missed that. I mean, I know we get Nero. Nero shows up. Because the ends are always fucking, like, Taiga losing her goddamn mind in her dojo. Which is... What was it? Episode two, she runs the budget out. And she's resorted to, like... Stock animations. Yeah, she's like the animatic, where it's just like, here are your keyframes, no color, no anything. Oh my god. And poor Ilya's just there having to tolerate this insanity. I just love fourth wall breaks like that. 
literally Tyg is a character that would break the fourth wall all the time. She she does it in Fate Go. Oh, Fate Go. I, I just fucking, got you working again. That's fucking Jaguar Warrior. She constantly breaks that fourth wall. I'm sure that if we would go and eventually like watch um, Babylonia, she'd be doing it in there too. Oh my god. So that is exactly what she would do. So although you're not a big fan of or hardly ever watch the Faith franchise, I would say this mm -hmm. wouldn't be a good anime for you to jump into, Ryan, since you might not understand all of the jokes they're throwing out. I mean, to be okay. fair, you, you and I are only getting like half of them, maybe a little bit more just because we know the Nasu verse a bit. Yeah, yeah. But Rin has, and Saber, has some cute and hilarious moments like <laughs> the entire episode where Saber is a maid and has to tolerate horse shit because she needs to pay for a gift for Shiro for his birthday. So she works at a maid cafe. She she works at what is cons what would be the, the overarching like connection to all of this, which is a goddamn cat run cafe. Who is apparently the Nasuverse unofficial mascot. I, I have no idea, I'll be honest. And there are, like... And I've heard they were created for Carnival Phantasm, but for new cat creatures. And my favorite is the one that says nothing, but always nods so enthusiastically to almost anything. It's like she's a mute, and all you get is... <laughs> and she's nodding like a nut. What the hell? Um, there's like, the bartender... There's, like, that cigarette-smoking guy that's so much, like, Kyrie. Yep, he's just sitting there just smoking a cigarette, like, yep. World. And, and he's fucking, like, he's world, he's, like, the guy that's, like, the world's gonna end. Yep. I'm just gonna sit here and enjoy my cigarette while it falls apart. And you were saying that it reminded you so much of Kyrie, and then I looked up, and they share the same voice actor, so. I'm not surprised by it at all. Do you know what the term idiot hair is, Ryan, for? <laughs> no. Uh, okay, I think it is. It is a piece of hair that always sticks up at a weird angle. No matter how much the character tries to change their hair, that piece of hair will always be out of place. Uh, all right. That's pretty reasonable. Okay. The name. And since there are many variants... Of the same character in the Fate universe. Granted, there are ten different versions of Arterius Saber. Mm, I'm trying to think. Based on Fate Go specifically, I can think of about five that are distinct. That's not counting them, like, altering their appearance for one reason or another. Okay, maybe I was just thinking of Saber face characters there. Yeah, that, that would be the case, because a lot of them, like, their faces are generally based off of the original Saber's face. But, um, I'm not too sure if I'm getting this. Is it Berserker Saber? Mm hmm Or, like, what's the evil Saber? Alter? Alter. Okay, so Alter Saber doesn't have the... A hoge, and she is borderline evil. If you're looking for a D&D &D classification, Orion, you'd be looking at lawful evil. Okay. So, Gilgamesh is there, and she, and he keeps pissing off Saber, so Saber gets fed up, tears off her okage, and transforms into Alter Saber. So here's the question, though. Was that intentional? Or was that just like, I'm so upset and it just happened accidentally? Like, she didn't realize that was going to change her? I think it's also part of the joke that w since the Ahoga grows back when and then she changes back to regular Saber. <clears throat> and, and Gilgamesh is into it. Oh, yeah. No, he, he's a secret masochist. He's totally a secret masochist. And although 
in another episode, Lin is so much into the world of magical knowledge, she has no idea anything wise about scientific knowledge. I mean, that's, that's literally a character trait of hers. Like, that's not even in, like, just Carnival Phantasm. That's literally, like, a whole entire thing with the mages of the world. They're so invested into magic that they've thrown technology to the side. So she needs to program a DVR, and she does not know how to do it. Literally to the point of rolling on the floor crying, having no idea what to do. Oh, this this needs a DVD to record things on. Oh, what, what should I do? These could be dirty. What do I do? I, there's not a spare one in the in the drive. Fuck, I gotta use Shiro's extra ones. Shit, what if there's porn on these? I gotta make sure I'm not gonna get rid of something important, but, like, but what if that's in there? <laughs> and Archer's there. Oh, Lynn, can I tell you something? <laughs> oh, my god. That's why I love Lynn so much. Because she's inept at technology? Because she is adorable sometimes like that? I, I would just want to pat her on the head and say, Silly Baka, I'll do it for you. Oh, she would not take that well. She would beat the shit out of you <laughs> for that one. Oh. Because now, now it's going to feel like you're belittling her and her abilities. <laughs> oh my. So, Orion, you want to know how ridiculous the Wacky Races one is? Sure. So... Remember the big long car in Wacky Races? I forget the guy that drives it or the name of the car. But remember the long ass one? Yeah, yeah. So there's that car in the race. Something akin to that, but with like a huge ass engine and everything attached to the back end. And it literally ends with that. Well, the, the, I should say the, the race starts with that car going fast, like going so fast that it literally cannot turn and explodes into a wall. Jesus. Like, one of the cars is quite literally like one of those rides that you put your little kid on that you throw quarters into, and it just goes up and down and yeah. rides for the kid. It's one of those. It's like a lion. <laughs> and apparently it goes faster the more quarters you put into it. <laughs> okay, that was one of my... One of the... Sorry, moments. sorry. One of... One of the carts is quite literally just a bicycle. Just a granny's bicycle. What? Yeah. It's fast as hell. Yeah, because the person riding it is super skilled at the ri at riding. It's literally the rider class servant there riding a bike, and it doesn't matter. She's that <laughs> skilled. She can do it that well. <laughs> There's a nature documentary about lions, and it's just Saber in a lion onesie. And they feed her Lancer. What? Meanwhile, meanwhile Shiro and the actual Lan like the actual Saber. Uh, uh, Saber are fucking doing the documentary narrators. Wait, how do they end up doing this? Is it just like a one-off? Each episode feels like it's just a one-off bullshit episode that makes no sense. Okay. It's more or less... Yeah, like I said, it's more or less sketch comedy. Okay. I, I guess you can say All the right. thing that connects it the most are those, like, Chaos Neckos or whatever they are, like the, the cat people. I think Chaos Neko was... Sorry, uh, Neko Arc. Sorry. Yeah, Neko Arcs. And one of them was Neko Arc Chaos. Even though he's just depressed as fuck. Like, that's what I get from him. His entire character is just depression and nihilism. Like, the world's just going to end. Fuck it. Who cares? Uh, the spoils of youth when everything dies. Oh. Like, it, it feels like that. Oh, speaking about spoils of youth, Ryan, do you remember when we were talking about Pop Team Epic where the next scene preview has nothing to do with the main anime. Oh, fucking hell. There mm, is no. a magical girl next time sequence that has nothing to do with the main storyline. 
it's like it, it has its own storyline that it's building through with, like, random episodes. Mm-hmm. And it ends off with, like, this random character showing up and being like, oh my god, what are you going to do? What do you have there? And it's, like, ingredients to a random, like, recipe or something. And I think the last one they show is literally the final recipe of what it comes out as. You find out next season! Like, it's fucking ludicrous. Like, and this came out in, like, 2009, I think. Um, so it's... yes, I b- over 2009, it had three, four episode seasons. So, yeah, it, it beat out, um... Pop Team Epic before Pop Team Epic did it. I wonder if this is now a trope, because I'm wondering if other, like, comedy sketches have done it before this one. Maybe? Um, oh, and the one that frantically nods is Neko Arc Bubbles. Oh, what about, um, so, so the episode where Berserker literally goes on his first errand is to pick up batteries. That's what he's given as a task to do. And he just destroys the town in the process. Taking out each of the servants that he would normally do for a Holy Grail war. (laughs) Just like accidentally as just random casualties. It's like, oh, I destroyed them all. Oh, I guess Castor was in there too. She's dead. Lancer becomes his best friend and just (laughs) drags him along to everything. And then uses him as a fucking weapon to beat shit in. To beat people's heads in, too, at one point. Uh, there is a drama about Sakura, who's one of the main female protagonists in... Oh, um... Day Night. Um, quite literally, where it's like, oh man, Shinji's being so naive, like, he's got some good underneath of there. And then there's Ryder just being like, I'm gonna drive a bike into this fucker. No, he may seem an abusive brother, but he actually is doing this because he loves me. He's got goodness in him, and I can't be mean to him, even though he's quite literally being violent and a horrible human being to me. Abusive? That's the word I was looking for, abusive. Like, it's canon that Shinji has literally abused Sakura, and potentially in almost the sexual way as well. I, I don't know for sure, but it's definitely something that's implied. There's a thing where the two protagonists from Stain Up and Melty Blood share up <laughs> and, uh, I forget Shiki. the Melty Blood Shiki. guy. I think his name's Shiki. And they come up with a plan to date all the female protagonists over the course of one day. Well, here's the thing. That was not some, like, that was a poll that was put out. For the audience to decide. Oh, really? Yes, that was a poll. They decided which one of those options. Either date the main protagonist. Or date all of them at once. Oh my god. That was a poll. And, well, it even told you that in like the last episode. Because they designed... They uh, wrote and did both versions. Mm-hmm. And the first one was the one the poll went to. And the second one was the one that um was the one that was shown at the end where it's like hey we still have this why don't we throw it in as like part of the final episode and that goes as well as you would imagine uh, it might go a little sideways just a little bit where they're literally literally running around to the point where like they forget that they were supposed to have another date in there somewhere you know, just just the chaos in general. Oh my god, this was great. But let's also, like, not ignore the fact that, like, when they gave us the other one that they had drawn up, it was, it was beautiful, because all the other girls were basically out for blood. Yes. <laughs> like, Rin's just sitting there, acting all innocent. But underneath Shiro's, like, uh, school desk, there's a fucking magical circle just causing him pain and shit. <laughs> and again, you can feel exhausted and tired and just miserable. And then, like, the main protagonist, um, Saber's there just being like, Shiro, what's wrong? 
And she was like, oh, how do I feel so bad? And he like grabs the wall and tears the wallpaper off. And there's just the magical circle there that's massively destroying him physically. Oh, wow. So this is insane. And I love it. Meanwhile, I I have to assume that Shiki has some aversion to curry. Like, because every time in his section of that that part, like, curry's just showing up out of nowhere. He turns on the spigot, and it's just curry coming out. Yeah? He's trying to take a shower. It's curry. <laughs> like, I, I don't know if there's a running joke that he hates curry, or if it's just the fact that, like, it's always curry. Everything is curry. It's never leaving. I could eat some curry now. Oh. Either, either way, it's fucking hilarious. That's fair. Uh, so yeah. I think there were a few, like two or three bonus episodes in there, but mainly released August 2011, October 2011, and December 2011. Twelve... 15-minute episodes with a handful of extras sprinkled in. Um, the final episode is a half hour. Uh, that's the one where we get that, like, new, uh, that new part that, uh, that shows the other half of what would have happened if the poll had gone the other way. I don't, yeah, I didn't see that one. Oh, you should go watch that. Technically, it's episode 13. At least that's what they labeled it as. I watch it all on YouTube. Wherever I was watching it, they just had the original 12, so... I just watched the 12. Go watch the 13th episode, man. That that thing. Oof. Oof. The pain. <laughs> the pain that those two go through. <laughs> I'll probably watch it tonight. Oh boy. You're gonna like it. That, that pain that those two go through is bad. Oh my god. Just goes everything just goes tits up. It's over. It's on. So um <laughs> anything else we want to add? Uh, I mean there's not much to add. It's a comedy series, so is there's it, not much. How many in the seasons way. is it? Three four episode seasons. Yeah. That's weird. They were there. I think they were meant to be like shorts in between like series. Oh, okay. Are they only like 15 minutes long or something? Yep. Yeah. Other than oh. the 13th episode, the 13th episode is a half oh. hour. Okay. Uh, and I'm not a hundred percent sure if these were released on DVD by themselves as a OVA kind of or not? They probably were. I, I would be shocked if they weren't. Because when I was watching it, I saw them listed as an OVA. Mm. Now, granted, that was also a YouTube person that did that, but I watched it on GoGo Anime. I went to the YouTube's. Mm. You can find it there. <laughs> For some weird reason, one of the side banners said "Merry Christmas." And had one of those dumb, like, Naruto Flash game, I think Yep. It was. Let me guess, was it Crazy Naruto? I I forget what it was, but it's April. Why are you saying Merry Christmas? This is just, like, many months back when it was October saying Happy Easter. Well, let's also not forget the fact that more than likely, that's also stolen artwork they're using to advertise with. Correct. Oh my god. Um, so, come back next time when we may or may not become furries. I'm definitely not going to become a furry. You don't know until you try, Orion. I definitely, uh, I might get in the pup play. Oh, but. I, look, man, I'm going to be honest. As much as I like what you're doing here, Brandon, I think this is the wrong anime to advertise as turning into furries. 
Uh, There's another one that'll probably be a better match for that one. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. Future teasers! It's true. Okay. Um, until then, catch you later! Later. See ya.